So, hello everyone. My name is Erik Lumme. I work as a software engineer in, in our consultancy department, meaning I work with customers on their own projects. And today I'm going to talk briefly about implementing file uploads when the connection is bad. I won't have time to go into details on everything, but I hope this will give a general idea. To, use, to do this, I'm going to use a very small sample application that I like to call the defect reporter. The idea is that perhaps you're a building inspector whose job is to go around buildings and finding loose floorboards and broken windows and taking photos of these that you then report in your application. So I have an example here of how it could look such an application, you log in, enter a description, upload a file, and then simply report this defect that you have found. And then there's another review that you can list the available defects in. So it's just a Vardin 17 project used, use the start.vardin.com to, to create a base and then some small modifications. As for the architecture, so to speak, of this application. We have a main layout with TypeScript. The view for reporting the defects is also in TypeScript, while the view for actually listing them is written in Java. The backend is a some Spring services with an H2 database and Vardin endpoints for the TypeScript view. And then we have a special also file servlet for handling the file uploads. So, the way it works then is that when you write a description and you post a file, it first posts separately the, the defect. So that would be the description of the defect, for example. And it posts that to the endpoint and gets back an ID of the newly said entity. Then it includes that defect ID and the file to the file servlet. And the reason it includes the defect ID is since this is TypeScript, we don't have a UI in Java. So otherwise the file servlet wouldn't know which defect this belongs to this file. And if there are no issues here, then this works very smoothly. The problem starts when the internet connection starts getting a bit worse. So perhaps you've been inspecting a building and on the elevator on your way home, you notice something broken and you want to take a picture, but the network might not work in the elevator. So you see the dreaded flashing loading bar or you just get a connection error. So what can we do to get around that? Because chances are if you close your browser or just forget about it for now, the next time you open the browser, your picture is not there anymore. Your picture is gone and then you would have to go back and grab a new photo, for example. And a place to start them would ensuring that the file is not lost because if the description is lost, then you can type it again. But if the photo or picture is lost, then it might be troublesome to go back and take a new photo. So I propose doing that by saving it first to an index DB. And index DB, if you're not familiar, so uh, MDN describes it as a low-level API for client-side storage of significant amounts of structured data. So we have local storage, for example, in the browser for small amounts of data, but IndexedDB is meant to be used for, for larger amounts. So here it starts by, by saving the file to the IndexedDB in the browser and gets back the ID that it was saved under so that we can retrieve it later and then continue as normal. So at this point, even if something fails, at least you have the file in the browser and can think of another way to, to post it. Posting the defect could look something like this. So this is what we would have in your TypeScript view. The description field is, is validated to, in this case, to see that it's not empty. It's a required field. Then you have some method for storing the file first and getting back that ID under which it was stored. We then use an endpoint to post the defect. 
and we get back a defect ID. And then once we have the file ID and the defect ID, this post file method will grab the file from the database and, and post it to the servlet. And then we might show a notification, just a normal success or error notification. How you actually say the file, this sample application that I am using here is using a Vardin upload component with the no auto set so that it won't automatically upload, but then instead allow us to upload as we wish. And so this code just grabs the first file and and calls the save file method. I'm not gonna go into great detail about index DBA, but it could look something like this. So once the database is created, which is all we had to create it first, then start a transaction. And as with much other codes, it's it's asynchronous. So we wait, we create a promise that is resolved once we have added the file to the storage. And once the transaction is completed, and then we return the result zero, there is the ID of the newly added row. But if posting the form fails, then it would be great at least if we could if we could save the form data also. And as of now, we haven't even talked about what to actually do with the file if, if the file posting saves, but at least we have it stored in the database. But what we could do if the form fails is have service workers to the rescue. So service worker is, is some JavaScript that sits between the application and the server. And it can act as a proxy in the sense that it can intercept requests and alter the request or the response. It can also run while the page is closed. And in some, some context, even when the browser is closed, given that the browser's background process is still running. And they, the service worker usually works by reacting to events. And there are two events that are of particular interest in this case. The fetch is an event that is called every time there's a network request from the page, then the fetch event listener will be called. And there we can modify the request or response or choose to respond to the request ourselves instead of it taking its normal path to the server. There's also a sync event that, that some browsers support and it's intended to use for a re-attempting a request once it has failed. So once it fails, it's usually due to network connections. So the browser can then, we can request the browser that we want to try this again by registering for a sync event. And when the browser thinks it's a good time, then it will send a sync event for us and we can try again. With this in mind, to continue with the service worker, I would slightly alter the code using to, to send the defect in the file. And there's just small changes here from, from when we last saw this one. And it's that the file ID is this time posted to the endpoint with the description. And we don't post the file manual anymore. We can leave that to the service worker to do, to do it so that once the it can intercept the request for posting the defect and post the file afterwards. And in this case, actually, the file ID is not needed in the defect report defect endpoint, but we send it anyway so that it can be intercepted and read in the service worker. So the flow would look something like this for the fetch. So with blue here, we have the service worker action. So once the defect is posted, we intercept this file ID that we included in the endpoint request. And we then post the defect. So basically just forward the request as is. And if it was not successful, then we return an error as before. But if it was, then we update the file that we are stored in the browser index DB database to set which defect it belongs to. So we, we get the defect ID as a response from posting the defect and then we update the file and then we post it. 
and again, if this fails, we return an error again. Otherwise, everything is good and we have posted the defect and the file. To have some resilience against failed brief requests for the actual defect, we should store it as well. So if the defect post fails, we can just add it also to the database, to the browser index DB, and then return the error as before. So in practice, this is what it might look like in the service worker. The self keyword here refers to the server, service worker's global scope, similar to window when you, in normal JavaScript. And we get a request from an, a fetch event and we check that it's the request that we are interested in, in altering or taking some actions on. And what these actions might be is to first say that, okay, we will respond to this. So we use the event dot respond with to say that the request should not proceed to the server normally. We will take care of handling it. And we still use the JavaScript fetch here to, to let the request proceed to the server, but in our control. And we use the clone here because request and responses in JavaScript can only, the body can only be read once. But by cloning them, we can read them multiple times because the fetch method might read it. And then we also might want to read it afterwards. So you will see a few of those clone calls because of that. And this is all again asynchronous code. So we use the promises and, and the then and catch the chaining. And once we get a response, we check if it's okay. And if it's not, then we throw an exception so that we go into the catch block. And if an exception is already thrown from the fetch call, then we also go to the catch block. And what we can do here is we can instruct the, because the update file here. So after we posted the defect, we would want to update the file to update which defect it belongs to by setting the defect ID. So here I have an update file method that takes the request and response. It extracts the file ID that we, from the request because we included that in the call to the endpoint and it extracts the defect ID from the response. And then it updates the file in the database and then it tries posting that file. But this is asynchronous, but instead of waiting for it to complete before returning, we can just instruct the event that don't terminate our service worker before this is completed and then it can do it in the background but otherwise there's a chance that the browser will not know that the service worker still needs to run so it will just terminate it but using this wait until we can ensure that the service worker lives until everything we are doing is completed and then we return the response as normal in that case but if there's an error then we save the defect to the index db first and requests as such cannot be saved straight to the database javascript does not support that they have some some contents that can't be saved serialized but so i have this request to defect method here that takes grabs the headers the url the body the necessary stuff on the request and builds our own representation of it and saves that then to the to the index db and then we re-throw the error so that from the browser's point of view it's just as we hadn't handled it at all just as a normal error occurred when that might occur when you send a request with the sync then so once at this point we have the file stored in the index db we have the request or the defect the important parts of it stored in the db in case the requests have failed so then we want to try sending them again at a later time and this is where the the sync comes in so it works so that you need to register for a sync event with a tag that you come up with and you need to register once for every sync event so those sync events won't keep coming automatically until unless you register for one every time you need one. And with this in place, then 
at some point the browser will send the sync event and we can basically run this whole chain but instead of coming from post defect here it's triggered from the sync event in the service worker so this is this chain of, of events can be run even when your tab is closed if the browser sends a sync event then and what we would do then is we would find the requests that we have saved so the failed ones and then proceed as before so posting the intercepting the file id so extracting the file id from the request posting the defect and then updating the file and posting the file and if something fails then we need to register for a new sync event and something not depicted here is that you should probably if successfully posting a defect or a file you should probably remove it from the database from the browser database so that you don't post it again the next time a sync event comes around and we don't end in an error here because when we register for a sync the service worker does not run in the window so we can't really show anything there so there's really not much to do if it fails again other than register for sync and wait wait for the next sync event but if there's a success there are ways to notify the user and we will briefly talk about that later so in practice sync is not as widely support supported as the fetch event so it's a good idea to first check if the browser supports it and we can check it use by looking if the sync is in the in the global service worker scope registration and if it is then we add an event listener and i said that we need to register for sync event with a tag here we can check that it's indeed the event is indeed for the tag that we registered and then we define an action so what do we want to do now when it's time to sync so what we want to do is the whole chain of looking through the failed request failed files and try to send them again and this is the core of this is implemented here in an on sync method and if there's an error then we request another sync but there there's an exception here that we re-throw the exception in the catch in the catch block because usually the browser the browser will automatically retry and send another sync event later if an exception is thrown from the event listener so we don't actually have to register for a new sync if we throw an exception but the browser may choose to say that okay this is the last chance if this fails then it won't try again it won't be any there won't be any more sync events and in that case we need to manually register for another sync event if we still want to continue continue trying to post this so then we call this action and again instruct the browser to keep our service worker alive until this action has completed the on sync method then so it might look something like this we have the defects that we or defect requests that we get from the database so this again to get stored defects here would be some indexed db code and we can loop through them and just as we needed to convert a request to some other to some other entity to, in order to be able to store it we need to convert it back to a request here and that might be as simple as creating a new request object and setting the url and body and headers that we extracted from the request earlier and then we get a response we use the javascript fetch again to to send it and if it's not okay if the response if there's an error then we throw an exception which will then be propagated back to the sync event listener and, and eventually to the browser so that it can try again at a later point but otherwise we want to update the file again and here i'm not posting the file straight away so what i would do is loop through all these defects and what's not included is in this code is i would basically have the same block for all the files afterwards so we might have multiple failed failed files from multiple failed defect 
posts. So similar to this, would loop through all the files and post them and throw an error if the response is not OK. So if we do something like this, then, then what will it look like? Well, Vardin 17 does not yet support navigating between views when you are offline. But what I did here was that I, I navigated to the TypeScript view first, and then I shut down the server. So this GIF you see here, the server has been shut down before doing anything. And I can still write a description. I can still choose a file. But when I try to report the defect, then I get a loading bar and eventually I get a notification that you will be notified when the defect has been posted. That notification is a lie because I don't have any such functionality, but at least the user can think that they will be notified. And on the right, you see the Chrome developer tools where we have the index DB and two tables, one for files and one for defects. And you can see that as soon as I click report defect, I then refresh the files table and the file has appeared. And I then refresh the defects table and the defect has appeared. So we have successfully at least saved both the file and defect to be synced at a later stage. Uh, here I have then restarted the server. And I have gone to the view where I can list all the defect reports. And right now it's empty. I refresh the page, it's, it's still empty. And I said that the sync event, the browser will trigger the sync event when it feels like it. But here I am doing it manually through the, through the developer tools. So the sync word there, there is the tag that I have chosen for from an event listener and I trigger the sync event manually and then I just refresh the page and suddenly my photo or picture and my description has have appeared. And those are loaded. This is a Java view, so loaded from the server. So this means they are now in the server's database. So if I wouldn't have manually synced, then sooner or later they would have magically appeared anyway. So this is a section I like to call questions that would be frequently asked if I didn't answer them now. And the first one of these is, what about Google Workbox? So Google Workbox is a utility library for service workers, and it's used by the default service worker in Vardin. And with this, you can, with just a couple lines of code, you can automatically have it cache or save all failed requests to a certain URL and automatically retry them. So saving a lot of code. But I found it wasn't quite flexible enough for what I wanted to do here. I wanted to react to a defect being successfully, successfully posted to extract the defect ID and then try to post the file right after. So that's why I didn't use it here. But there's a lot of tools in Google Workbox that are useful in other cases, and I might have borrowed a line of code or two from there. Vardin support. Currently, as I said, we can't navigate between views in Vardin 17 while offline, not even TypeScript views. Of course, it couldn't load any data while offline, but we can't even navigate between them. But some improved offline support is currently aimed for Vardin 19. I don't know all the details about it. I'm not in the product development department, but um, apart from being able to open a view or navigate to a view while offline, there will also be some changes to the default service worker. So currently in Vardin 17, the service worker is just a JavaScript file. It's not a TypeScript file. You can't use you can't use your ES module imports, you can't use your NPM packages without modifying the Webpack configuration. But the default service worker in Vardin 19 will be TypeScript, as far as I know, and will have access to NPM packages. So that means it will likely be easier to 
include some some libraries that you might need so what i said it can run in the background so you can have the tab closed and it might trigger a sync event anyway and try to upload it, upload it in the background so what happens then if the session has timed out and it's simply so that if you have a, the normal username password authentication authentication and you start a session it and it has timed out then it won't be successful in posting it because of the security restrictions that are in place but i believe that as for those applications where offline is very important they might have some other means of authentication some cookies some json web token and otherwise the next time you open the application and log in again the background sync can still work to post your your defects and files again so in the application that i showed in those gifs i used the standard session and username password so it still works in my case but i just need to log in again before i can trigger the sync again notify the user i think the most common case so you don't have access to the window but what you do have access to is push notifications so you might have seen a web page you visited that asked if it's allowed to show notifications so these kind of notifications you can trigger from the service worker although push notifications aren't supported in all browsers not in safari for example email is another option or you can just maybe you have a custom table in the browser indexed db where you add an entry each time something is posted in the background and and then when the user opens the application again you can go through them and show some messages that these have now been posted compatibility the service worker is not yet in ie 11 and the way i have coded this sample application it relies on the service worker to post the file so it wouldn't work in ie 11 but other browsers support the service worker and even though the background sync is only supported in Chrome and Microsoft Edge, basically, the, you can use some fallback code that when the page is opened, you can trigger the sync manually at least once if, if the background sync is not available. So then it won't be the browser that triggers it in the background, but you can at least still trigger it manually when, when the application is open. that's what i have in mind so had in mind so let me see if there were any questions <laughs>